Hey guys, a little while ago I was shaving and it just kept, popped into my head. I wondered how come the hair on my head and face keep grows, get, grows longer and longer but the hair below my neck just gets to a certain level and then stops. I mean, what's up with that? Are there just certain hairs that are like overachievers? They're just like, yes, we're going out and get it. We're in it to win it. And then other hairs are like pot smokers laying on the couch saying, I'm just, I'm three quarters of an inch and that's it. You're not getting any more out of me. And then I realized the whole train of thought was a black hole. I was never going to know. Some things are just too deep and wonderful for us to know, so we might as well move on. And that's what I did. So I came on here to decide to update the channel. Tell you guys about a documentary I watched last night called The Science of Fasting. I watched it on Amazon Prime for free. If you don't have Amazon Prime, you can rent it for like $1.99. But it is a really good documentary. It's actually older than it appears to be. It, I think, came out in late 2011. But somehow it just slipped under my radar and I've just never seen it. But so, you know, it popped up in my suggested videos. And it was really cool because it showed a global perspective on fasting and it showed what research has been going on um, in other countries about the topic of fasting. And I try to figure out the effects of fasting and how fasting can be used to uh, address chronic diseases. And um, so it was really kind of neat. Like this, it starts out in Russia. And it shows you like how people for 50 years in Russia, during the old USSR, Soviet Union, um, were studying fasting. And they were like pretty aggressively going at it. And this place, it shows this place in Siberia where people still go today to where there's like these hot springs, but they actually go on like fasting retreats. And, you know, they did this independently. It talked about all these studies and things that, have, that the, these doctors in Russia did that still haven't even been translated and uh, the information they gained. So they noticed improvements in many chronic conditions, um, one of which was surprisingly depression, mental illness, and um, you know people who were suffering with these things that when they went on a fast, a lot of these symptoms improved. Their mental outlook improved. Um, people with inflammation, so things like arthritis, asthma, inflammatory responses in the body. Uh, they noticed, you know, in the last 40 and 50 years, they noticed improvements in these things. So I thought that was really kind of neat. And then it goes to like Germany and it talks about what German pre-World War II uh, doctors, not Nazis, uh, starving people, but what pre-World War II uh, doctors had, had sort of looked at some of the same things and arrived at some of the same conclusions independent of the Russians and without any awareness of what the Russians were doing. And um, there was one doctor, it was really poignant, he came to a point, one of these German doctors said that if he was developing a medication that got all the results that fasting does, that um, pharmaceutical companies would and universities, he'd be getting grants, he'd be getting um, offers and proposals for, for research and he'd be getting financial aid. But because there is no money to be made in fasting, like pharmaceutical companies are not going to fund fasting. They're not interested in that because if you can get well and address so many chronic problems just by uh, ceasing to eat, just by abstinence from food and, and uh, drink, they don't make any money. So it's, it's the same thing that I've talked about in the channel before about big pharma, big food. Um, you know, it's funny. I was telling my daughter a while ago about how so many studies that have affected United States policy, the governmental policy and recommended um, diet that we have in America has come from studies researched by cereal companies, by big food companies. And so how can they really be uh, trusted to be accurate when the researchers are, um, in order to get more money and to continue to have jobs and continue doing the research that they are doing, um, are under pressure to find in favor of eating more corn, of eating more wheat, for example. So it kind of blew her mind. You know, she's a college student and they're always talking about studies and, and research. But then, you you know, if you kind of throw a ringer in it, if you tell someone, well, you have to ask what... Uh, who's got their hands in the money of this study 
And the fact is, I thought it was so important what this German doctor said because one of the things that comes up about fasting in America is there's not a lot of research about it. And so people always say that. Well, there's not a lot of research about it. There's a deficiency of research. Well, this, hey, Brainiac, the reason there's not a lot of research about it is because nobody wants to throw money at these things. The drug companies don't want to throw money at it. Big Food doesn't want to throw money at it because they don't stand to gain anything if we stop eating and if we get well. Just that simple. And uh, so it's unfortunate that that's the situation, but, you know, it's it just goes to show you that it's that situation ha is happening all over the world. Um, so I thought that was kind of cool, you know. Um, and then here in the United States... Um, they talked about applications for cancer um, because when people then there was one researcher that I had seen before in a documentary uh, eat fast and live longer link in the description if you've never seen it it's 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 what started a lot of the fasting uh, the recent interest in fasting in the past few years I'll, I'll put that in the description for you but um, so this this doctor in Los Angeles at USC was doing research on fasting and chemotherapy. So they like, they would fast, they fasted one group of mice and they fed the normal diet to the other group of mice and then they injected them with chemo drugs, which is basically poison. The mice who'd been fed, most of them died <laughs> when they got the chemo. The mice that had been fasted had reduced symptoms. They didn't have, um, metabolic damage, they didn't have internal organ damage, they didn't seem to have any cognitive impairment. So of course people in the world are saying uh, if, you know, if cancer patients can fast and feel better in chemotherapy, why, aren't, why isn't that being discussed? Why isn't that being uh, talked about and researched? And um, you know, they even concluded that just fasting can slow the growth of cancer. Uh, so you know, it may, even without chemotherapy, it can slow down. You know, the, one of the researchers said for cancer cells, fasting is a nightmare. It's just a situation that cancer uh, does not thrive in. If you're routinely fasting or if you're on an extended fast or, you know, if you're practicing these protocols. So, you know, the conclusion that I came to, I was like, why don't more people talk about this in fasting uh, discussions? It's a very good documentary. If you've got family or friends that are like, what are you doing? Why are you fasting? It's a good place to point them right now, especially if they're linked with Amazon Prime. And just say, look, watch this documentary. It's from a few years ago, but the research has only gotten broader and stronger in favor of fasting um, and the benefits of fasting. And um, what I liked about it is it has a global perspective, so it's not just, it kind of blows out of the water the whole idea that fasting is just a fad um, or that, you know, which is the way it's covered in the media quite often, honestly. Just It's just this fad, it's this craze, it's just going to pass through. That's what a lot of nutritionists say. It blows that out of the water because it says, look, people around the world have been studying this, researching this, and finding um, good results, positive results, things that can improve human beings' lives for half a century. And, uh, they, of course, they've been fasting much longer, but in terms of research, in terms of using the scientific method. Um, so it's got a global perspective. It really explains well the metabo metabolic process of fasting, the whole idea of going into ketosis. It talks about the benefits, like the fact that you don't, um, you don't lose your lean gains when you're fasting. Uh, you don't, you know, your body doesn't attack the pro protein. You don't go into starvation mode, etc., and all the other, um, just the goofy things and myths that people say, you know, and whether fasting is dangerous and stuff like that. So wanted to hit you up there about that documentary. It's a very good documentary. You should check it out and eat, drink, and be merry for tomorrow we fast. <laughs>